Uh, is Ohio State cheating? So if you've been on Twitter, you've seen some of the stuff going on. Uh, you've seen the catapult stuff. Uh, you, you saw Dan Wetzel talk about how uh, there's a possibility that Michigan is, is, I don't think he used the word victim, but he used some kind of word that to, to say that Michigan may have been a target. I think that's maybe what he said. Uh, a target of some of this cheating. So obviously everybody is then going to connect Ohio State into this because uh, what is happening is that apparently there was a possible data breach at Catapult. Catapult holds a lot of uh, practice footage, things like that for teams. And so now uh, many people think that this must be Ohio State, that Ohio State uh, figured out about Michigan's cheating and they just decided to do their own cheating, whatever you want it to be. Um, And then obviously other Twitter accounts got a hold of it, uh, and many websites got a hold of it as well. I know Wolverine Wire uh, did a a good good job of reporting it with the facts of what was going on. Uh, I think it was Isaiah Holt or Holt. Um, I think he did a good job. Yeah, I think he did a good job with his article, just laying out the entire situation. Um, and then I think somebody who did an absolutely terrible job is Blue Blue Bloods Bias. Um, I, I. that Twitter account is losing credibility by the day. I love it. <laughs> yes, me. Um, so I know Blue Bloods Bias is the one out there that's getting like a lot of the recognition. And I wish other people would because there's other people, like I said, Isaiah Hole, that's doing a good job reporting on this and actually yeah. talking about it. Um, but, I, you know, Blue Bloods uh, sensationalized it a bit for me. And then what happened, um, what was it, two or three days ago, uh, RJ... Uh, from I forget what his last name is, but him from uh, I'll look it up really fast. Him from uh, on three, he reported that Catapult came out and they had a statement that said they found no data breaches or unauthorized access to any customer's content. We are not under investigation by the NCAA or any law enforcement agency. So a report that would seem to kind of put Ohio State in the clear, but you know. Obviously, there's always more to the story than what there might seem. So it's kind of one of those situations where it's a little dicey and we don't have all of the information. Uh, more information could come out. Adam Rittenberg did a nice piece on it as well for the ESPN talking about all the facts that were going on there. Uh, so I'm just going to basically open it up with a really, really simple question and we'll kick it to Derek first. Uh, Derek, do you believe Ohio State cheated and stole practice footage of other teams? So I would hope that so so a, a, a little more a little more depth right is um, s- semantics semantics go a long way um, right so is catapult being investigated or is there a separate investigation going on and catapult just has something that's part of that investigation. Right. So catapult might be coming out to try and save their business and say, hey, we're not being investigated. Nothing got hacked into our system. That doesn't necessarily mean that maybe there's not a separate investigation taking place into any number of college football programs where if. Because accessing data like that doesn't necessarily have to come from hacking if there's people that are uh, giving out somebody else's uh, stuff people on the inside right so Mm -hmm. that wouldn't necessarily be any sort of breach that would scare teams away from using the catapult programs in the future uh which would be very detrimental to to their business um so i would hope uh i would hope that if if something does come out um I, i would hope that there's no major coaches that that are part of it um, if if something does come out, uh, I would I would hope that for the integrity of college football, um, that it would be something like a, a low level staffer trying to uh, to get the edge on their own career um, by what finding. Happened? What's that? I wonder where that happened. Right. Yeah. <laughs> wonder I, why uh, even that is the baseline for good right. versus bad. Just, just hypothetically, right? Just, just all hypothetical. Yeah, hypothetical. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, um, um, but you know, gosh, for I, I don't know. Maybe 
that there's part of me that hopes that that uh this thing grows legs and and blows up um just because of the way that the the Michigan situation was handled um the the way that the the way that it was really a, a, a targeted job against Harbaugh who if, if there's anybody in that program that probably would be clueless to it, it even though he should be in charge of his program right that's the that's the saying is that you you're you're in charge of your whole program mm -hmm. um it, it's probably probably would have been Jim Harbaugh but he still was the one that everything's been levied against and and that's the way that it has always seemed um but gosh part part of me hopes that that there is something with legs with Ohio State because that would be great another part of me thinks that uh -huh, maybe it would be nice to be a, be a little bit peaceful uh for a while and not have everybody calling each other cheaters every single day on every social platform that exists. <laughs> um, so, but, but this is something that, uh, like you're talking about JR, right? Um, trust, trust the sources, um, right? Ran random accounts on, on the Twitter and social sources. media, yeah. they, they're not sources. Um, and if something's going on, if, if this is taking place and, and I feel like, there might be something to it uh, because of the fact that multiple teams changed the way that, that they uh, watch film in a, in a very, very similar fashion um, that there must be something that caused those teams to do that. Right. And um, initially a lot of people are like, Oh, it must be Michigan. Mich uh, they're afraid of Michigan cheating. Um, and it turns out that Michigan actually was allegedly a target in any potential issue that, uh, that did take place. And it's, even even the the stuff that you're mentioning, on one hand, catapult came out and acknowledged, "Hey, we're part of an investigation," mm -hmm. and then on the other hand, they said, "Hey, we're not under any investigation." Uh, so uh, again, that's where you know may maybe it's semantics, maybe it's you know they're not being investigated, but they're part of something else that is being investigated. Yeah, I think the exact wording they used: "We are not under investigation by the NCAA or any law enforcement agency." So that doesn't mean they're not investigating themselves, you know. Right. But, but yeah, no, I, I, uh, I see what you're saying there, and yeah, I mean, I, if I were you, Derek, I'd be hoping for the same thing. I'd be, you know, hey, get those people who are calling us cheaters and everything else, get them down in the mud yeah. with us and let it happen. You know, I'd be down there with you. Uh, Justin, but, obviously, you're kind of looking from the outside here of uh, the Ohio State-Michigan situation here. What's kind of your take on the whole is Ohio State cheating situation? Um, so pretty simply, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Um, and so there are a lot of different uh, organizations, people, schools that would right now like to make Ohio State a target, you know, that uh, there's, you know, of course, Michigan would, you know, catapult, you know, there's people who may want Ryan Day out of there that can leak information, you know, don't, don't put it past boosters and stuff to leak information and, and put stuff out there. Um, I think there's two, two different things here. You know, what, what Derek was talking about with changing the, the practices, uh, or the, the film and stuff like that. Um, if that was a result of catapult stuff, that could just very well be like, if anybody heard about cheating in general, um, they would change that. Not necessarily just because it's Ohio state, if that's what you're referring to. Right. Um, yeah. But so that they would change that regardless of the team. So whoever did it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so I don't know necessarily that leads to for sure being Ohio state, but I just think there's, there's, you know, we, we don't use anecdotal evidence in court for a reason. And, uh, you know, there's just not enough concrete. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of people connecting the dots and, um, throughout history, uh, you know, internet sleuths trying to connect the dots doesn't typically work out well, unless it's that cat documentary where whatever that, that cat documentary where everybody found out something putting their heads together has never happened. That's why it's a documentary because it doesn't happen outside of that. So We'll just wait for the news to come out. But right now, I'm I'm just gonna say I don't I don't necessarily think they were. And if they were, I don't think it would it's anything that would be a huge story. I just think it's the the idea of it's getting played up a lot. Similar to Michigan. I think the idea of the Michigan cheating it got, you know, up, it right? got played up a lot because it's big brands, man. People yeah. want drama. And and, oh, and you know, we this... acknowledged it. Oh, hold on one, one second. We acknowledged it on the Big Ten huddle, like ESPN wants to throw this out there because they want to diminish the Big Ten. Um, so obviously it's going to get played up more by them 
um, in that situation, it's very possible they could do it to Ohio State too. Sorry, Derek, go ahead. And, and what I was going to say is that this is just another, so all of this stuff, right? Like, uh, I think that we're going to talk about this in a second, but um, college sport, the, the NCAA, it is not this uh, clean, everybody follows the rules organization. The, no. the NCAA is an organization that has a ton of stupid, vague rules. Um, and cl- clearly, clearly um, tampering with players uh, before they enter the, the transfer portal is a rule that is just understood it's okay for anyone to break. Right? Un- until, until somebody would bring up some sort of investigation, right? Um, clearly, pay for play in recruiting is something that anybody that wants to can can just break break it. Like you just saw it, uh, JR, right? well, who is it, JJ Smith, uh, Jeremiah Smith, the mm-hmm. the wide receiver. Yeah. Right. It took him all day to sign his uh, his letter of intent, and the reason that he that they said it ended up taking him all day is because he had to wait till his NIL stuff uh, cleared. So right. it the uh, the NCAA and college sports in general, you think. You think that there isn't sketchy stuff that's been going on with these types of things for years and years and years and years. Um, that's right? rampant for a long time, right? And, and it well, was. The SEC even, is so much better at NIL NIL. right now, <laughs> right? Because they they already they already had the program in place before NIL exactly. was legal. <laughs> it's like, oh, we can bring these people to light now. Story of this this guy that grew up, you know, not not much money, and he's uh, the National Signing Day's got his new Dodge Ram. Posting pictures on Instagram, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, that 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 segues exactly into the last question I had here. Uh, and Justin, we'll go to this first with you. I mean, you know, you look at the SEC, and the SEC is basically like, if you don't talk about it, we won't talk about it. You yeah. know, Jimbo Fisher and uh, Nick Saban had their kind of spat last off season where they kind of went at each other a bit, but they never like accused each other of cheating. I don't think. However, you know, in the Big Ten, what was it like? Almost every single coach or like every single coach wanted something to happen to Jim Harbaugh um, in that situation. Um, I don't know if I've ever heard of like the SEC doing that. And I definitely don't hear SEC fans calling out, you know, other SEC fans of schools calling them cheaters and stuff like that. Like obviously Ohio State, Michigan State fans have done to Michigan, Um, you know, and and I'm not trying to say that it's like all fine and dandy down the SEC. I know they hate each other down there too, but um, obviously the Big Ten, like there's going to be some sketchy stuff happening if you're going to get good at football. Like you pointed out, Derek, it's just kind of the nature of the way things are in college football. Um, Justin, is there some kind of problem that the Big Ten has with accusing and degrading one another uh, for cheating and things like that, unlike what the SEC does? I think so. It's it's the SEC for you know the longest time, well, in recent years, right, has been – seen as the better conference you know up until probably like well you know people still look at them that way but but for you know the recent years they have been put up at the top you know and it's been the sec and then everybody else the big 10 you know distant second so in a way i think the big uh the sec has had this us versus the world mentality and i think that's evident in the fact that they do stick together as a unit because their power comes in their conference, right? Um, I think that when people look at the Big Ten, they they look at the Big Ten as more individual programs. They look at it as Michigan. They look at it as Ohio State. And when you're looking at the SEC, it seems like the conversation always comes up, the SEC versus, you know. Right. And so I, I think that philosophy is why it's that way. I think the Big Ten is just one of those. It's like, you know, it's a lot of big brands. And, and the way it, it has been is just, the Big Ten has been fighting for, you know, second place and and everybody wants to be the guy in that conference and everybody wants to be, you know, at the top of the the conference that's known for the biggest brands. And they so they just kind of like self, you know, destruct and cannibalize each other. And so I just think that's the difference is the SEC is just kind of always stuck together. They've 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 not always stuck together in a good way more so just a superiority complex and the fact that just that's how it's been with the sec is they've been known as the sec is the brand and the 
the Big Ten is, you know, Ohio State is an individual brand. You see Michigan is an individual brand, and people want to be that top brand in, in that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Derek, you agree, or uh, what are your thoughts on it? So I, I think the Big Ten is on the doorstep of getting dangerously close to um, to a, a a pissing match of tattletailing on each other, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, it's uh, it, right. It kind of, it 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 very well very well could, um, and it's kind of like say you're a kid and you are at like camp or something like that. Uh, you go to a camp or you're, you're in a big family and you got a, a bunch of siblings. Uh, you ever, have you ever seen the movie heavyweights? Yep. Love right? they, they all, they all hide all the, the candy and stuff like yeah. that. in our bed yeah, clothes, yeah. Right. So, so everybody's doing something. And then if you tattle on one person and get them in trouble and everyone's doing it, now it's just a big pissing match. Now everyone starts like paddling on each other. Yeah. And um, there were, so, there, there are a lot of people, um, a lot of people inside of the University of Michigan that strongly feel, and uh, I don't, I don't know what, what evidence they do or don't have, but they strongly feel like the private investigator that uh, did investigation on them uh, from Allen's laptop to the NCAA that showed like his red tape and stuff like that. Uh, was hired by either Ryan Day or a member of Ryan Day's family. Um, there, there's a lot of people. I'm not talking about um, crazy message board rumors or um, people that are on Twitter under random Twitter names, um, but people that are actually like regents um, mm-hmm. uh, that are, are inside the the walls of University of Michigan uh, during this investigation. They they feel that the original private investigator came from Ohio State. Um, and Tony Petiti, uh, the way that he targeted Jim Harbaugh um, to do something completely unprecedented and um, suspend him with without any completed investigation, showing any evidence just in the middle of the season, um, doing that while he was on a plane, right? Wait, waiting until uh, he was in the air on the way to Penn State so that when they landed and people uh, turned their cell phones on, that's when Jim Harbaugh found out that that he was being suspended. Um, so what that did is that rubbed people the wrong way. So now there's a lot of stuff that people at Michigan are like, seriously, this is what you're going to come down on? Like, this is college football, and, and this is the way that you're going to act? We know some stuff. Uh, we know some stuff that other schools are doing. Um, there was rumors about catapult specifically um, coming from inside Michigan uh, two months ago. Um, so, and with with Ohio State being connected to that, and not even being connected with Michigan, but being connected, I, I think that uh, like two months ago it was um, Penn State and and Maryland, maybe um, yeah, that, really- that they're saying uh, allegedly. Um, Somebody from Ohio State was able to obtain practice footage. Now, it, it doesn't mean that it was all of their practices. It, I, I don't know what what that means. And and the dots were being connected with people that now work at Catapult that previously were on staff at Ohio State um, and their connections to people that, that are still on staff at Ohio State. So um, there, there's a chance that that's what this could turn into. And, and that is kind of why I was surprised that something that Michigan has clearly proved was not impactful. Um, right. If, if the only reason that they were successful was because, um, they, they had people going to, to games on behalf of Connor stallions and decoding signs for them. Uh, they wouldn't have made the run that, that they still made the, the second half of the year this year. Right. So, um, it, especially because if any program got investigated, like Michigan did, and, and things started getting turned over on some of their low level staffers that provide, um, provide data and stuff like that to, to the coaches. There's probably a lot of programs that aren't going to come out, come out, uh, grading hundred percent at abiding by NCAA rules, uh, in that process, but nobody talks about it. Right. Cause a lot of people are like, yeah, this is, this is a stupid rule. It doesn't make sense anymore. Um, we, we, we know that other teams are doing this and, 
it's been well documented that teams trade information with each other, right? It, mm-hmm. it, it was documented that Rutgers and Ohio State provided Purdue last year with that's allowed though, buckets. right? Yeah, exactly. But 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 that's what I'm saying is, um, what's what's the difference? Uh, what what's the like? What's the difference there versus oh, that's a whole uh, some, conversation, right? Exactly. <laughs> but um, I don't have time for that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. But but what I'm getting at is, uh. Tony Petiti is probably the one that opened up the can of worms um, mm-hmm. for this. And um, if if dots are connected to um, anybody at Ohio State hire, hiring the uh, original private investigating firm, now a, a private investigator probably covers their tracks a little bit better than Connor Stallions did uh, with his uh, Venmo receipts and tickets to games being bought under his own name uh, and stuff like that. But We'll we'll see because it, it very much could turn into uh, a, a pissing match uh, on piddly stuff that the SEC certainly does sweep significantly worse things uh, that are NCAA violations under the rug and shake their hands and smile at each other about it. Yeah, I mean that's a great way to point out just you know how one little thing can start an avalanche and you know somebody has dirt on somebody else and then you get somebody else involved and you know who who knows Rutgers might have something right now that they're cooking up to say you know try to get us involved here's what we're gonna throw out there you know I mean it could be anything right. these right. these programs and these coaches have a whole lot more dirt on each other than I think we sometimes realize and uh, for sure you know you get for into sure. it we'll see it's a happens. dangerous oh good and with all the all the players transferring like Granted, you know, a lot of times players have not like players have nothing to do with any of this stuff. They they go to class, they they do their studies, they show up, and and they get told what the game plan is, and yeah. uh, and they get coached on it, right? But uh, if players do have any wind of it, I mean, in 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 inner trans or inner conference transfers are pretty regular now. Um, mm-hmm. you, uh, even, even uh with coaches, right? Um, you've got a head coach at Purdue that was Rutgers at Illinois, taking like all of Minnesota's history. coaches. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Minnesota's coaches are are going to Rutgers, so yeah. um, there's a lot of a lot of connections that uh, certainly do know uh, shady things that go on within every program. Yeah. Um, last last thing on that, yeah, if you ahead. don't mind, is you know um, similar to what we were talking about earlier, where there where there's money, there's corruption, right? And and baseball, right? Other teams were obviously cheating besides the Astros, but they kept those in house because it's a black eye on MLB. Right, conferences right now need to be thinking of business the same way because even more so now in the these major network TV deals and this arms race of his businesses, his individual businesses of these conferences right now. So what the teams within the conference need to understand that we're putting a black eye on our conference versus theirs if we continue to do this. And so I think this whole piss and match has to like kind of stop. And I think they need to start coming together and and as one and realize the Big Ten's in the best position right now going forward starting next year. And they need to cut all this stuff out because we have new members coming in that are seeing all this as well. And so, you know, if there's another realignment, which there will be in the future, this it's got to, it, this got to stop um, right. for the Big Ten to want to want to get on top and stay on top. So, yeah. Uh, last thing, we have a comment from Nick. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. Uh, Ohio State is absolutely cheating. How is it not cheating? He means cheating uh, when you steal an opponent's practice footage. Yes, if they are indeed stealing the practice footage, then yeah, yeah. that would be one hundred percent cheating. Uh, like we said, you know, the investigation uh, or whatever investigation is happening, it's kind of unclear at this point. Um, you know, we need to see what happens there. But uh, like I said, you know, there are good reporters out there that are doing a good job. With this kind of stuff, um, Isaiah Holt, I think, is doing a good job. Uh, Adam Rittenberg, I think, did a good job for ESPN. Um, I didn't really like what Dan Wetzel put out there. It seemed very vague and confusing and seemed like he had information that he wasn't willing to give. So, I don't know. He might put more stuff out there. I'm not trying to disparage Dan Wetzel's name uh, or anything like that. But he's another person that's putting information out there. Uh, just please, for the love of all things that are holy, do not base all of your knowledge on this situation on Blue Bloods bias that's not a smart decision (laughs) there's going to be more is misinformation than there is concrete evidence because misinformation in in that 
the the bigger story is, is saying that Ohio State did this versus saying they didn't. Exonerating them is not the big story right now. The big story is pushing this. And so a lot of well, that's what know, people, clicks, right? Yeah, people say don't believe everything you see on the internet and yet continue to do that and say as a matter of fact they're cheating. But you know, look at the evidence presented. It's not it's not there yet. It's not not even close to, to proof. Yeah, exactly. Hey, thanks for listening to the Big Ten Huddle. Please do like and subscribe. We appreciate that. If this was your first time listening, we are the Big Ten Huddle. We cover all things Big Ten football and basketball. We have a long episode every Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, all at 9 o'clock. So come in, check us out, get in the chat, let us know what you're thinking. We would love to have you join us and learn more about the Big Ten.